What's going on guys? This is Empty Box, and this is going to be a probably pretty quick descent into madness and chaos because it's a special kind of something being an IndyCar fan as well as also being a sim racer. I'm a glutton for punishment. So yeah, I'm going to talk about that lovely news from the other day that was actually news from about a year and a half ago. For those of you guys who have missed the kerfuffle, congratulations. Uh, that that's good for you but long story short back in the middle of 2021 motorsport games being the licensing company that they are more or less scooped up the IndyCar license to make an IndyCar game in 2023 now motorsport games being motorsport games there probably will not be an IndyCar game in 2023 but there's supposed to be one but the only thing that we've seen in the last year and a half since that announcement has been a render of the door IR18 and basically that car's already in R Factor 2 Motorsport Games track record appears to be more or less a crappy NASCAR video game on consoles that a lot of people don't like as well as R Factor 2 mods which that's cool and all don't get me wrong I don't have a problem with R Factor 2 but 60 million dollars <laughs> so to say the least they don't exactly have the greatest reputation and they apparently have an exclusive license, but it's not an exclusive license, but it is, but it isn't. And nobody really knows at this point. This all just blew up all of a sudden out of nowhere because iRacing dropped a bombshell on us just a few days ago that because of this licensing agreement that exists, iRacing won't be able to have a normal official series with the Dora IR18, you know, the IndyCar, or the DW12, the, the previous IndyCar, or the IR05, the, the previous, previous IndyCar, because the licensing forbids running those cars in the official series on the tracks that the IndyCar series actually visits, which means that you won't be able to race like an IndyCar at Indianapolis as part of like the regular iRacing schedule, which is stupid. You'll still be able to use those against the AI or in hosted sessions, but again, this is this is this is a special kind of something but wait there's more and that's the fact that you're no longer going to be allowed to broadcast races using the Dora IR18 DW12 the IR05 the, the IndyCar content within iRacing you can't do a TV style broadcast with like a ticker and you know trackside cameras and someone commentating the race you can still stream the races which i just find this whole situation highly peculiar like i can Put a video of me driving in these races, but there can't be someone who's watching the races. I, I, I don't understand this at all. <laughs> it's really peculiar, but it's really a problem when you consider the fact that the Dora IR18 within iRacing is a car that, because it's an Indy car, you know, you got the oval side of things, you got the road course side of things, and iRacing, the way they're separated and built up you know like they, they really don't mesh together directly as well as an IndyCar series would properly need to so a lot of people are running leagues with this car it is a car that has got a bunch of league support out there with a lot of really high class high caliber racing leagues and now they're not going to be able to broadcast their races they have sponsors that you know want to support their league and you know, help pay for the whole thing and make it all work and prize funds and all that stuff. And that's being basically thrown into limbo here at the 11th hour, the 11th hour of the 11th hour. Like, it's ridiculous. I don't know if this is because of the licensing per se or if iRacing just fumbled the ball here and didn't give anyone a heads up, but this just popped out of nowhere like two days ago. Like, oh yeah, start of the year, you're not going to be able to do this. Thanks which is really, really terrible. And then along the same side, at some point, Reza Studios got thrown into this as being involved because people were like, oh, Reza Studios got the IndyCar license, which I, I don't understand where the heck that came from. I think people were like, oh, well, the, the Formula North America 2022 or whatever is going to be called uh, for the Racing USA DLC pack for Automobile Easter 2 got kiboshed and isn't going to happen, got canceled. And people are like, oh, well, they got the actual license or something. Like, I, I don't know. It, it's silly. I, I don't know where that came from. I don't know why Reza Studios even got involved because it really didn't have anything to do with them. And this was announced a year and a half ago at this stage. So this, an IndyCar game and motorsport games tied together were, were <laughs> well known about. But really, that's 
pretty much all we have to go on at this stage. There's been a lot of people that have been like, oh, well, actually, I've read the SEC filing, and it's not an exclusive license, which would mean that this is all much ado about nothing, or alternatively, there's something else at play here. And I, I don't know. Nobody knows. Because you know what? This is going to be one of these things where motorsports games is going to motorsports games and do what they do and basically buy up a license, throw money at it, hope that someone is like, oh, they're going to make this game. Let's throw money at them because then we'll get rich. And then nothing will ever happen with it because they don't care. Simple as that. What we'll get to show for it is literally R Factor 2 content, which, not not to take a shot at R Factor 2 again, but $60 million for R Factor 2 mods. Not suspicious at all. Not suspicious at all. Or alternatively, $60 million for the BTC, C, IndyCar, and NASCAR licenses. I mean, one of those is actually valuable, but, you know... It's not 1997 anymore where people are actually clamoring for licensed series racing games. There's a reason why it's basically Formula One and NASCAR, and then World of Outlaws and NHRA kind of exist out there a little bit in terms of the gaming scene beyond sim racing. But it's not 1997. Nobody cares about these games, which is why nobody's going out and making these games, which is 100% in all likelihood... I guess I have to say 95% in all likelihood, why IndyCar agreed to this in the first place. Because I almost guarantee you that Motorsport Games walked into IndyCar corporate and said, hey, we want to go ahead and make an IndyCar game. And we're going to pay you for the license. And it was probably significantly more than any of the other studios that have IndyCar content in their game were willing to pay because it's just not something that's particularly hugely valuable. Nobody wants to make those games in the first place anymore. And on top of that, nobody cares about IndyCar to begin with because it's a small little tiny series that like 15 of us care about. And the average IndyCar fan is like 95 years old. So, you know, like the, the value isn't there. So IndyCar probably went ahead and said, hey, you know what? We're going to make some money off of this. We'll get some exposure as well to a younger audience. Like... Yeah, sure. And unfortunately for them, I don't think they have anyone who is probably knowledgeable about what Motorsport Games in all likelihood is going to do with the license, which is precisely zero. Or alternatively, they don't have someone like Dale Earnhardt Jr. who can be like, hey, yeah, don't do that because these guys over here, you've been partners with them for a very long time. Make sure you take care of them because they got a good product that I believe in. And therefore, because Dale Earnhardt Jr. is Dale Earnhardt Jr., like, they're going to listen to him. IndyCar doesn't have that. Or at least Mario and AJ aren't going to be like, hey, don't make a video game with those people. Make sure you take care of those people over here. Like, they're not, they're not involved. So it just was never going to have that, that safety net of, hey, pump the brakes. This is a bad idea. And sadly, here we are. But wait, there's more because I gotta get my pound of flesh in. If I'm gonna do this video of incoherent rambling about IndyCar being IndyCar and the pain and suffering that is being an IndyCar fan, I am going to get my pound of flesh. This whole, whole kerfuffle over the licensing and video games within the IndyCar world and sim racing and all that stuff follows on the heel of the greatest offseason in IndyCar history where such things as the 2.4 liter engines that we were promised like four years ago, those aren't going to be a thing. And that was supposed to be for this coming year. It just, poof. Yeah, we're not doing that. By the way, <laughs> season's over. <laughs> like, did y'all really just decide at the end of October or whatever it was that, hey, Chevy hasn't even built a 2.4 liter engine. Like, I don't think this is going to be a thing. I, I don't think we can do that. Like, were you really that clueless? Or did you just wait till the very last minute to be like, hey, uh, we're going to stick with the current engines because, like, costs. So, yeah. I, it's a move. I don't think it's a terrible move because I don't know if IndyCar really particularly needs to spend more money in that regard for something that isn't going to actually improve the series all that much. Yeah, so it'd be way cooler if they had an extra 100, 150 horsepower or whatever is going to end up working out to be in the grand scheme of things. But, like, that's not IndyCar's problem. 
that's not going to solve IndyCar's problem. And I would honestly rather have 26, 27 full-time cars because that's going to make the racing better than more power, even though more power is always much more awesome. But still, to say it's a disappointment <laughs> would be an understatement. And then on top of that, you have the loveliness that will further this descent into madness and chaos that has been the high V IndyCar race at Iowa Speedway, which, mind you, I am an Iowan. This is in my backyard, about an hour and a half away. It's the closest major racetrack to me. It happens to be like my favorite oval you could build because as a kid, I always absolutely loved Richmond and NASCAR Dirt to Daytona and other games. It was always my track. And then they built a slightly bigger, supersized, awesomer version of Richmond. Oh yeah, and then they put Indy cars on it and it actually worked out. The perfect storm. And it happens to be in my backyard. So yeah, I'm slightly biased, I understand. But they go ahead and do this thing where they jack the ticket prices up last year because they want to bring in all these concert events, you know, and you know, get people into the stands because people weren't going to IndyCar races and they still aren't going to IndyCar races because apparently we have to have a concert to draw them in to an IndyCar race. So basically, you're saying that your product isn't good enough to sell. You have to attach all this other stuff that people really want to see and then just like force them to watch an IndyCar race. Yeah, which really pissed me off because quite frankly, none of the music artists that they've had announced either last year or this year have had any sort of appeal to me so therefore why would i spend the type of money that indycar was asking to go to a race that is two hours long i have to drive two hours to it, it's got concerts that i don't give a hoot about like it was already terrible last year and then this year they went ahead and jacked the prices up like double and went ahead and had the most tone deaf <laughs> press release <laughs> I, have, I have possibly seen like from someone in in the position that IndyCar is where they basically said more or less well we want to get to the point where we can charge these ticket prices because we believe our product is great and it's great entertainment value it's actually cheaper than if you go to you know a, a similar major league sporting events and more or less someone saw what happened with the Miami F1 race and decided that Iowa Iowa <laughs> the tracks in the middle of nowhere I mean Des Moines is up the road like 20 minutes ish but still Des Moines is Des Moines People don't want to go to Des Moines. People don't want to be in Iowa. Nobody wants to be in Iowa. Even people in Iowa don't want to be in Iowa. It's like 15 below zero Fahrenheit outside right now with like 90 mile an hour winds. I certainly don't want to be in Iowa right now. But then just like to go ahead and say that and to go ahead and basically belittle the cu customers that were saying hey these ticket prices are way out of hand by making a tone deaf well you're just poor type press release especially in the economic era that we live in of yay inflation which i ain't even gonna go down that whole rabbit hole but you know s suffice to say that you know what if you want to raise ticket prices go ahead and raise ticket prices that's fine you know, I, I can understand why you need to raise ticket prices. Inflation is rampant and through the roof all over the place. But then to go ahead and make that press release and try and justify it, even by saying, like, oh, well, it's it's still cheaper than the Grand Prix of Long Beach. It's just, like, the most brain dead. Like, this is why oval racing is dead besides NASCAR, because you guys can't get it through your thick skulls that the reason why people don't want to go to these events is not because they don't have a concert, but because of the fact that I don't want to go sit in a grandstand for two hours when it's 185 billion T degrees outside, baking in the sun on the weekend, and I have to drive two hours there, two hours back, because everybody has to drive two hours there, two hours back, because it's in the middle of nowhere, it, it, it's Iowa. There's not a lot of us that are from Iowa. We're a rare species. But, you know, like, people don't want that for one freaking race. And the reason why people will go to the Grand Prix of Long Beach, you know, one of IndyCar's best events, it's the second greatest event on the calendar by a long shot, is because of the fact that there's actually racing. 
and the race fans want to go to the races and they want to see the race cars and they don't want to just see an indie car race they want to see an all the car races you know they want to see stuff <laughs> that isn't just one series they want to see an event weekend and unfortunately because of these yahoos that have done what they've done over the last 30 40 years we exist in a world where nascar has a monopoly on oval racing and that's just the way it is so therefore series like indycar is basically screwed unless you're gonna pave over whatever oval track and all of a sudden throw silver crowns out there which i know a lot of you guys out there would absolutely love and i think that would be great but it's not a practical solution to say the least maybe we need to put indie cars back on dirt and make them champ cars again maybe that should be a thing <laughs> oh goodness oh let me go back to the engine thing nobody cares about hybrids nobody literally Nobody outside of Honda or Chevrolet or whoever else is involved on this gives a flying fudge about whether or not the cars have a slight battery assist next year. Like, if that's your headline feature going into next year, ooh, they have hybrids. It's the first hybrid Indy car. Nobody cares. Nobody. And, and the silly thing is, hybrids have been forced upon the racing world as like a checkbox. And it's like, you know what? If you really cared about the environment, you just wouldn't race to begin with. <laughs> like, come on. Like, just move on. <laughs> and, don't, and don't shout about, but my road relevance. They're single seat, purpose built, high downforce, carbon fiber, jet fighters on wheels. I don't understand the road relevance. I mean, I, I drive an Acura. Is is that basically like 95% the same thing as a you know Honda HPD IndyCar engine under my hood? I mean, it's got like 95% the same displacement almost. It's missing a few cylinders, but you know, like, basically the same. It's so road relevant, said literally nobody ever. And then you look at what's going on in the rest of the racing world and you see People are actually interested in Formula One. And then, hey, it's because Drive to Survive. No, I'm just going to go ahead and let you know. It's not because of Drive to Survive. If Drive to Survive came out in 2004, nobody would care about Formula One in America. You know why people care about Formula One in America and why Drive to Survive has actually turned out to be a very good thing? Because Formula One's actually been very compelling over the last several years, which is actually incredibly out of the ordinary. You then add on the fact that we live in the world that we live in and you have all these various different causes and people just go crazy and they're like worshiping Lewis Hamilton, they're worshiping Max Verstappen and those two guys like their fan bases absolutely hate hate each other for the exact reason they like the driver that they like so it's just like a whole perfect storm of just rivalry and chaos and just constant bickering and arguing online and then to have what happened in 2021 take place just furthered it and it's never gonna go away because it was perfect drive to survive did not create that it didn't create this spark no the fact that it is actually a compelling product finally created that because it's not like people cared about formula one and in 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018 because it was boring and then it actually became exciting and compelling and there was a story to tell which is why you can have a drive to survive. Instead, you can give us a stinking show on the CW the the CW and try and be like, "Oh, well, we marketed. We we did drive to survive." It's like that's not you, also, go ahead and take a look at IMSA. Nobody watches sports car racing. And I say that as someone who watches sports car racing. It's even worse off than IndyCar. People don't watch it. There's a reason why they have to have a bunch of really rich guys drive the cars because they subsidize the whole thing. And everybody knows this, including the sports car people. It's just a way of life. And you know what? It is perfectly fine. And I don't have a problem with that because you know what? That's how sports cars racing works. And it's how it's always worked. You know, let's be real. 
but look at look at the amount of GTP programs and LMDH, whatever well, the heck that all stands for anymore these days. Remember when hypercars actually sounded cool? Anyways, look at all the programs being announced for that. I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and just guesstimate that the actual cost between running one of these programs and an IndyCar engine program are probably not too terribly dissimilar. Now, if I'm supposed to believe that the reason why IMSA has so much more manufacturing involvement all of a sudden in interest is because of the hybrids, <laughs> well, <laughs> really, <laughs> really. I mean, I think the manufacturers like the hybrids because then they can pretend it's road relevant. <laughs> but I don't think it's why. I think it's more so like, hey, we can actually do this and get some return on investment. You know, win some races and, and everything will be good. And like, yeah, we, we can do that. As opposed to IndyCar being like, yeah, you're going to build this specific engine to this specific formula, to this specific regulation, and those other guys, they've been doing this for the last 10 years, so, like, good luck. By the way, this is still the exact same car, so it's got to fit in the same dimensions and everything, you know, like, it just, <laughs> it's just, it's just a face palm moment, constantly with IndyCar, it is repeatedly punching yourself in the nuts for self-gratification, more or less. And if you've been on the internet, you you probably have seen that a time or two. It's just as disturbing as it sounds. So let's just go ahead and recap. The licensing for indie cars and sim racing and video games is, is basically screwed at this point. And you're probably not going to get an indie car game. Hopefully indie car at least got like some money out of it because then that actually might be a silver lining. Maybe this is a master plan. Maybe they knew exactly who Motorsport Games is, and they decided, hey, we'll take that check, and we'll go ahead and cash it. And then once you go bankrupt, probably less than a year at this stage, we'll go ahead and actually make a video game with someone that has a bit more experience and has a little bit more quality control. A little bit. Huh. So, that, yeah, that's just the way I see it. I don't know. And then the whole <laughs> engine situation and hybrids and the race at Iowa Speedway and just the death of oval racing in general and oh, being an IndyCar fan is is suffering. It it is a suffering, suffering, terrible thing. Friends don't let friends become IndyCar fans because this is just the existence that you, you have. Like, it just... It is what it is. Just just say no. Just say no to IndyCar. I'm saying this in jest. It, uh, you know, I enjoy watching IndyCar racing, but by goodness, does this series make it difficult to like itself with so many things and I wish I could say that I feel like this is some sort of master plan on behalf of IndyCar with the, this licensing situation but when the series has like a history of repeatedly looking at its toes and saying hey you know what it'd be really fun if I took this gun and pointed it down there and just bang yeah I didn't need that toe anyways <laughs> like what is it doing I got I got five extra I got five extra on that foot so <laughs> heck yeah like, it just... I'm interested in reading the comments on this one. This is going to be an absolute train wreck. But that's what this is. And I'm leaving this in here because I posted on Twitter the other night that I recorded a video and well, a commentary and things got out of hand as things have gotten out of hand here once again. And people are saying, you know what, go ahead. Just, just go ahead. Because apparently people like to hear someone who's passionate about things. I don't know. I clearly, clearly I'm passionate about that, so I hope you guys enjoyed that one. But uh, anyways, that's that. I'm moving on. Not spending any more time on this because it ain't worth spending any more time on. Just like IndyCar. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. I right, bye.